So in this video, we're going to use the elimination method for calculating determinants. And all the elimination method for calculating a determinant is, is a transformation of the matrix you're interested in into an upper triangular matrix. And we are doing this because if we have an upper triangular matrix, then the determinant is just the product of the diagonal elements. So it's a simple way to calculate a uh, determinant. So the two tools that we're going to use for the elimination method, one, we're going to add a multiple of one row to another and then replace the other row with the result, essentially using property three from video one where we did properties of determinants. And in property three, we discovered that if we obtain a matrix B from A by adding a multiple of one row to another row, then the determinant of A is the same as the determinant of the resulting matrix. So we don't change, we get a, we get a matrix that has some, we'll get a matrix that has some zeros in it, but it will have the same determinant as the original matrix. And then if we need to at any point, we can interchange rows. And by interchanging rows, we're basically using property two from properties of determinants, where we saw if we did this elementary row operation, by of interchanging two rows, then the determinant of the matrix that results was the opposite of the determinant of the original matrix. That means if we were interested in the determinant of the original matrix, we would have to take the opposite of the determinant of the matrix B that resulted from interchanging those two rows. So ultimately the elimination method is just applying these two properties of determinants, these two element properties of these two elementary row operations to create a matrix that's an upper triangular matrix and for which the determinant calculation is easy. So here's an example. Let's say we want to know the determinant of this matrix. Let's convert this into uh, an upper triangular matrix using the uh, properties shown on the previous slide. So the determinant of A we would get by calculating the determinant of 1, 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 2, 1. And what we want to notice is that if we took negative 2 times row 1 and added it to row 2, we would get a 0 right here. And if we added row 1 to row 3, we would get a 0 right here. So if we do row 1 plus row 3, Replacing row three with the result will have a zero in this position. And because both of these moves utilize property three of properties of determinants, the matrix that results will have the same determinant as the matrix we started with. So let's go ahead and apply those two transformations. So we're leaving row one unchanged. And then we're doing negative two times row one plus row two, replacing row two with the result. So negative two times one is negative two plus two is zero. Negative two times zero plus one is one. Negative two times negative one is two plus two is four. And then we're gonna do row one plus row three. So we get one plus negative one, replace row, Z, row three with the result. So one plus negative one is zero. 0 plus 1 is 1, and negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And now we want to notice that we can get a 0 in this position by taking the opposite of row 2 and adding it to row 3. So, and again, this would be using property 3, so the resulting matrix will, or determinant will have the same value as the original determinant that we're interested in. So if we do that transformation, we are not changing row 1 we are not changing row two, we are changing row three. So the opposite of row two plus row three will be opposite of zero plus zero is zero. Opposite of one is negative one plus one is zero. The opposite of four is negative four plus zero is negative four. And now I see that I have zeros below the main diagonal, so I have an upper triangular matrix, which means the determinant of this matrix is going to be the product of the diagonal elements which gives us a negative four. Let's play this out just a hair differently so that we see an application of step two where we interchange rows and see how this plays out. So let's say in step 
two right here, instead of doing this, which was the most efficient move to make, suppose we interchanged row two with row three. So let's do that. I'm gonna put equals where this equals is the same one that you see here. So we still have the determinant of A on the left-hand side in spirit. So if I, let's, let's say we had the one, zero, negative one, we had the zero, one, four, and the zero, one, zero. And let's say instead of being efficient like we were here, we instead interchanged row two with row three. So we're gonna take row two and interchange it with row three. So if we do that, we're gonna wind up with one, zero, negative one, one, zero, negative one, and then we'll have zero, one, zero, row three becoming row two, row two becoming row three. The problem is if we interchange two rows, if we interchange two rows, we know that the resulting determinant is going to be uh, the opposite of the determinant we're interested in. So this determinant has the opposite value of a, so we need to multiply this by negative one anytime we interchange two rows. And now we can continue going. To get a zero here in this position, to get a zero in this position, I would take the opposite of row two and then add it to row three, replacing row three with the result. So what I would get is I'm not changing row one. I am not changing row two. We are changing row three. We're doing the opposite of row two plus row three. The opposite of negative one is negative one plus one is zero. The opposite of zero is zero plus four is four. And now I have zeros below the main diagonal. So I have an upper triangular matrix. So it's going to be negative one times the product of the diagonal elements on the upper triangular matrix. So one times one times four. And when we multiply this out, we see that we still get the negative four that we had originally.